I actually got diagnosed with flu A okay. and I had uh, horrible respiratory issues because of it. And I like, you know, I was, oh, so I have asthma, just, you know, I have chronic asthma. So when I got the flu, it just made breathing like an incredibly hard task. So um, it was not until almost the end of April that I was really able to get back on the bike and Whoa. like start to recover. So it was a good six to eight weeks between getting the flu and, and being able to get back on the bike, which was very, very hard for me because, you know, this is, I use uh, Peloton for, you know, my mood. I use it for, you know, feeling like I'm doing something active. I mean, it, it it's such a huge piece of how I sort of stay balanced in my life now. Sure. And so I had all what I would consider time on my hands, even though I do have two small children and a full-time job, but that aside, uh, <laughs> I had some time on my hands, so I started a nonprofit. It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and say goodbye to me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the clip out, episode 161. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. You caught me off guard. Oh, did I? Yeah, because you the, the computer was making a weird noise, and I thought you went to fix it, so I took a drink. <laughs> so No, because it doesn't it doesn't make that noise when we're talking, so I'm assuming it's okay. I guess. If we all sound like robots this week, you'll know why. Yeah. You'll know what happened. It'll be my fault. That's if, for sure. If the rest of the show <laughs> sounds like this. <laughs> well, now you're doing it on purpose. No, I am not. <laughs> I like monkeys and chicken fingers. <laughs> monkeys, the band. <laughs> right. I mean, I guess I guess regular monkeys are fun, too. But uh, but I prefer the musical group slash television show. <laughs> so uh, what uh, what do you have in store for people this week? We've got a ton of news articles to hit. Uh, all kinds of interesting things happening. Uh, we're going to have a new uh, another visit from Dr. Jen Mann. Awesome. Uh, of course, our interview that we have with the creator of Emotional PPE. And uh, like I said, there's just a ton of articles. There's so much going on. There's new new classes we're going to talk about. Fundraiser coming up this weekend. Fun opportunity with Peter Shankman that we're going to talk about. Well, great. So before we get to all that, shameless plugs, don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts where you can go rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, be sure and subscribe while you're there so you never miss an episode. And if you would be so kind as to leave us a review, that's kind of helpful as well. It is. I mean, for us. Yeah. I don't know. It does a whole lot for you, but uh, <laughs> but it makes us happy. We have a new review. Would you like to hear it? Yes. This is from, it just says, number 128. Okay. All, all right. right. Uh a must if you love Peloton or wonder why everyone else does. Aww. That's the headline. I found this podcast totally by accident when searching my podcast app for anything I could find about Jen or Christine. <laughs> Can you guess who my favorites are? <laughs> what a lucky accident. I was instantly drawn in by the chemistry between Crystal and Tom and Crystal's adorable laugh. I've been coming back faithfully ever since. What an incredible balance of real, informed, trustworthy news, humor, and genuine love and respect for Peloton and the community that makes it what it is. I never leave not amazed by the individuals you interview. What an amazing thing we're all a part of because of amazing people. Thank you, Crystal and Tom, for doing this and doing it so well. Wow. So thank you. Thank you, indeed. That was a really nice review. Thank you so much. Yes, it's always nice to get the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, also you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there like the page join the group it's a great way to stay up to date throughout the week or uh, chat with us or other people yeah. uh, that are that like the show and like Peloton as well we try maybe to, you have a random question you don't feel comfortable putting on the OPP totally and uh, we try to keep it a little calmer over there than the OPP so fingers crossed <laughs> and uh, you can Sign up for our newsletter at theclipout.com where every week, mostly, you get a newsletter that gives you all the links and articles and pictures and stuff just in one easy digest so you don't have to go hunting through the Facebook page, although most of it lives there as well. It does. So 
that's all of that. Let's uh, let's dig in, shall we? Yes. Breaking news. This is Pride Month, as you well know. Yes. And there has been a change to how people can interact with Peloton, whether it's the app or the bike or the tread. Yes. Uh, a pretty significant change. I would say very significant. Yeah. yeah. So in the past, uh, when you set up your account, you choose your details like your height, your weight, your age, and uh, you also choose whether you are male or female. Starting now, you can also choose non-binary. And from what I can gather, this is uh, pretty rare to see from tech companies. I think it's incredibly rare. Yeah. And I mean, you don't see it a lot. Mm -mm. But from tech but, companies, I think it's unheard of. Yeah. And so um, it's just an interesting, an interesting evolution in how that progresses. And honestly, regardless of where you might or might not fall on the issue, if people are making that selection and you want to collect data points, you want to know it. Yeah. Right. Like uh, like from a tech company right, perspective. Right. Like, yeah. Like from the company standpoint. Yeah. Your, like statistics. Your goal is to collect data. And so whether or not. You like this doesn't matter. They're still wanting to collect data. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I you know, I think uh, Peloton has really taken a stance in general with social issues. You know, yeah. they're saying, hey, we're on top of these things. We're going to be a company that is an ally for for everyone. All people welcome. And so I think this is another way that they're they're making that known. Yeah, I, it was interesting that how they kind of rolled it out. Like it's, it seemed like it just kind of they just flipped a switch and it was there as a choice and it wasn't a big. It, yeah, I, I found it in an article uh, from The Verge, and then I believe it was the next day Peloton had a like a their usual banner where they release information, but I didn't see the usual email splashes. I right. didn't see a big deal. Doesn't mean there won't still be one. Sure, uh, it's only been a couple of days, and also. It might have been one of those situations where this is just a foregone conclusion of what what we should be doing. So right. if we make a big deal about it, maybe it says that like they're trying to pat themselves on the back. It becomes performative rather right. than just we just do this now. Yeah. And so I think I think rather than kind of showing up that aspect, they're just it's just this is what we do. And I think that's always a tough line to walk between. It is. You, you know, you want to take a stand or have your voice heard, but you also don't want to like make it about yourself and so you know or like i said look performative like you're putting on a show and so it's a it's it can be a delicate balance doubly so for major corporations yeah i uh i've seen a lot of articles in the last few weeks that you know companies are are getting picked on and being called jumping on the bandwagon sure. and just you know the conversations we've had with the people that work at peloton including john foley Good old John John. Uh, <laughs> I I really genuinely do not feel that that's the case. This is not a situation where Peloton is jumping on the bandwagon. I feel they feel it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And it's I, I always think it's funny when people complain about people jumping on the bandwagon for stuff like this, because it's like, I mean, I understand the where have you been, but also at least they're finally here. Like, don't. You, well, there's people saying, oh, it's just them jumping on the bandwagon. Right. And like people who ne don't necessarily agree with some of the things that Peloton is oh, saying. Oh, I see is like, saying. Yeah. So I've seen both. I've gotcha. seen both of those anyway, aspects. So that's there now for people if they yeah. would like to select that. Absolutely. Peloton stock ticker. So Peloton stock shot up again. Yeah, it did. <laughs> this is almost becoming a boring story. Oh, it's <laughs> up again. It's less boring because we have a little bit of stock. Yeah, I'm happy with it. <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. But uh, but it shot up again. And then uh, Idaho Reporter. Yes. Which I hope they mean the state of Idaho. They do. Okay, because it'd be do. a little weird the other way. It would. Yeah. It has an article about their theories about why it has jumped. Yeah. And so there's a couple things that they point to. One is that the um, COVID crisis is unfortunately on the rise in several states again. So I think that collectively, Wall Street as a brain said, you know, this is going to people are not going back to the gym. Like they're, right. and, like they're not going to even if they go long term, now is not the time we need to double down on companies like Peloton because it's going to be even longer before the the world looks quote unquote normal right. again. Totally. And so that was the one thing. The other thing is a bit of sad news that another casualty to COVID is 24 Hour Fitness has filed for bankruptcy and closed over 100 stores permanently. Oof. Yeah. 
Like that's sad. Is this the one that did it kind of douchey? Yeah, I <laughs> oh, I hate to pick on him cuz it's like kicking somebody when they're down, but um and It's not like people can boycott him. Well, that's <laughs> good point. Um that's a good point. But unfortunately, there were reports uh within the clip out group that I saw and I I saw it other places on social media that people who had worked there a long time, we're talking 24 years, yeah, decades, 34 yeah. years, they were told over a recorded call like it was a call and they couldn't speak back right like it was just a pre-recorded like i don't tel- know that it was pre-recorded oh, i okay. got the impression and this is just from what i do at work sure. how this works sometimes it's like a webex but you can't talk back oh, to it okay. everyone's muted and you couldn't respond and it was just a very short here are the facts your job no longer exists right and that was it it was gotcha. like three minutes Oof. yeah yeah that's kind of ugly yeah I mean there's never a good way Yeah especially right now like how Would you do it you know yeah. you can't gather A bunch of people together you can't sure. Are you supposed to bring them all in and have face To face meetings in a right. small room like It's terrible it's just terrible like It's terrible that it's happening to people and it's terrible That this is how they found out so I I have a lot of empathy for Everybody involved that stinks But uh, the, it, going back to the article That's the theory that you know Both of those things happening in unison Kind of Got the Wall Street all a flutter about Peloton again. That makes sense. It does. You know something else that should have them a flutter. What's that? Tread sales are starting back up. Yeah. So uh, barely, but they are. But it's uh, a start. They, yep. Absolutely. They have posted on the website. They being Peloton posted on their website saying, "In very select areas, we are starting to sell treads again." And so you go in and you put your zip code in to see if you are one of the lucky ones. And it's not where you would think. It wasn't in New York, so uh, I thought that was interesting. Well, they're still pretty buttoned up there, though. They aren't absolutely they? Yeah. are. But given that their distribution center is so centered around New sure. York, I kind of thought that. I still thought that that would be first, but yeah. it's not. There are several areas around the country where it's happening. And when several being like more than two or three, right. not several, like a whole bunch. Do you know off the top of your head what some of those areas were? I know that there was a place in Texas, okay. um, but I don't remember the other cities off the top of my head. Gotcha. Just curious. Yeah. And then uh, the German Apple TV and iOS apps drop this week. Apps, right? No? Yeah. I yeah. I'm so not Apple. I'm like, is that what that means? <laughs> yeah. So last, it was like a couple weeks ago, we talked about how Apple TV was now available for Peloton. Well, that was only in the US, potentially the UK, but certainly not within Germany. And uh, so this week it dropped for Germany. So it's fully functional in Germany. Gotcha. Now. And so is the iOS app. So that's good news for the Germans. It is. It is. They were excited. Well, that's enough of listening to me talk about things I don't know about. Let's have someone that does know what they're talking about jump in. Getting the psychological edge with Dr. Jen. So back again to talk about the psychology of exercise is Dr. Jen Mann and licensed marriage, family and child therapist and sports psychology consultant. You may know her from VH1's Couple Therapy with Dr. Jen or VH1's Family Therapy with Dr. Jen, her long running radio show. And she's written four best selling books, including The Relationship Fix, Dr. Jen's Six Step Guide to Improving Communication, Connection and Intimacy. Dr. Jen, hi. Hello. So I guess our topic this week, we're going to talk about burnout, which I used to sit next to one in my algebra class. No, uh, no, no, no. This is a different kind of burnout. Like the denim jacket, Mm-mm. the hand drew a Metallica logo on the back. That's <laughs> not what we're talking about? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No. I think we were thinking more like exercise, like you're burned out oh, on exercise. I am. Oh, really? I am. Yes. Did you- <laughs> Did you do a lot today? No, but I'm burned out on it. Oh, okay. So (laughs) you have ideas, tips, strategies for how to get past that. Yeah. And look, I think that we've all been there. You know, our our Peloton instructors are some of the most inspiring, amazing people we could ever ask for. And sometimes no matter how inspiring and amazing they are, we're just dragging. So, you know, I've been there. I know Crystal's been there. Well, Tom, you've gotten stuck there. (laughs) Out of that, I'm not giving up. But there there are a few things that I can recommend. The first thing is put your workout clothes out the night before. Oh, that's a good one. 
that, you know, sometimes just standing there in front of your drawer with all that cute Peloton apparel, it can be difficult to make the decision. It can take too long. You can't like, oh, the exercise bra I was planning to wear, it's dirty. I don't know. And <laughs> then next thing you know, 20 minutes have gone by, your kids have called you, and now you've missed your window of opportunity to work out. Yes. So put your stuff out the night before. The other thing is pick your class the night before. And what you may even want to do is start to visualize you on that bike or on that tread or on the floor doing that outdoor run because doing that, what we know in sports psychology, doing that helps you to actually get there. The other thing is that we all tend to have our kind of standby instructors. Like, oh, yeah, I always take so-and-so or, you know, I always do this one app class that I love. Make a commitment. If you've been burnt out, next week I'm going to try at least three instructors that I've never tried. Or maybe I've only tried once and it didn't really land. But you know what? Sometimes an instructor will do a class one day that really connects with you and then another day not or vice versa. So try a different instructor. Try to shake it up. The other thing is... The night before, try one of the Peloton meditations in advance, one of the sports-oriented ones. I am obsessed with Ross Rayburn's long run meditation, the 10-minute long run meditation. I listen to it every uh, Saturday night before my long run on Sundays. But there are so many great ones to kind of help inspire you. The other thing is reach out to someone in the community or a friend. Make a plan to either take a class together or to report back at the end of a class, or maybe even you guys make a plan of buying each other like a little fun gift. It, it like, hey, at the end of the week, it, you know, if we keep our commitments to each other, like I'm gonna buy you a you know a bag of, of chips or you know like <laughs> a Peloton T-shirt or you know something fun that you will really look forward to, so that there is kind of a light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, I, so many good ideas. Yeah, I mean, I've seen you do that in yes. terms of like, uh, like not the buying things. Well, buying clothes, but I mean, that's for yourself. Clothes, that's not so. the thing you like that. <laughs> but uh, but I've seen you like, oh, I don't want to do this ride, but I promise this other person. Yeah, that's a huge one for me, especially first thing in the morning. If, if I know that people are waiting for me at 5 a.m. my time and I don't show up, I'm a jerk. So like, I got to get up. <laughs> Totally. And, and actually, the other thing is take a live ride. Yes. This live run, because there's something about that. It starts at this time and you don't want to be late. Like you kind of feel like a jerk if you are like walking into the classroom and say, and also then your numbers are all skewed and like you feel off. But if you make a commitment like, hey, I've checked that box, I've counted in and now I'm going to be there. There's more, there's a little more pressure to actually show up to, as they say in AA, suit up and show up, you know? (laughs) And the the other thing is like, don't wait to feel like doing this. And, and Tom, I'm looking at you a little bit when I say this, that, (laughs) You know, a lot of the time with exercise, yeah, sure, there are those times where you're like, I can't wait to get on the bike. I can't wait to get on the tread. I can't wait for that workout. But there are a lot of times where you don't feel that way. And what you always want to ask yourself is, how am I going to feel at the end of this workout? How do I want to feel at the end of this day? How do I want to feel when it's all done? And there's something that's really magical about that feeling of completion and sometimes doing it when you didn't feel like doing it feels like so much more of an accomplishment than when you were like jazz and ready to to rock and you do it. It's like, okay, yeah, I did it. Of course I did it. It was fun. It was easy. But it, when you kind of push through that mental sludge and you're able to be like, yeah, I did it anyway. Like that's an awesome feeling. It is. That you know, is so true. I want to circle back to the live ride suggestion. And just, yeah. I, I just thought like, that's such a great example of, not just a sports psychology thing, but that's so Peloton specific. That's not the sort of piece of advice that just a regular person or regular sports psychologist could give you. Because if they're not a Peloton fan like you are, they, they wouldn't would know that. They wouldn't even know the impact <laughs> of something like that. And also, they wouldn't know how terrible it feels to go into a class late. <laughs> I keep that entry class like. I think I was like five minutes late and I felt so terrible. Like, <laughs> And obviously it wasn't about anyone else other than me, but I was like, oh, this just feels wrong. It feels like coming to class late. Like it felt like I got a tardy, even though like, 
you know, Bex is cool with it, but like it just it didn't feel so good. It's like walking to a movie after it starts back I, when they had movies. I just have to say there was an instructor that used to work at Peloton, no longer does, who and and remember the leaderboard was smaller then, yeah. um, especially on the bike. And uh, they would they would literally call you out if you came in. <gasps> they would be like, they would be like, I see you. I see you. Like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I'd be like, li- like, that kind of shaming. Like, then you're like, I'm not going to show up at all if I'm late. Like, that's, that's, that doesn't And I help. never, I never show up late to a live ride. Like, if I'm, yeah. if I am, like, late, then I, I have to really have a good reason or I, I was doing something else that was active and it was okay in my head to switch or something, you know. Yeah. I, there was something else I wanted to point out about the live classes, though. Given that we have so much going on, uh, at Peloton, they don't have as many live classes. So like for me right now, personally, I can't I can't take a lot of their classes live. Just it doesn't mesh with my schedule. But um, yeah. I, I just want to point that out for people who are like, but I can't get up at, you know, whatever time to take a class. Yeah. That's OK, Especially too. Those of us on the West Coast, it's particularly oh a lot of the rides are like 530 in the morning for us. But but there have been a few more recently that have been at like eight o'clock for for us which has been really, really nice. But sometimes it's even, it's like you don't have to take a whole week of live rides or runs or, or strength classes. Sometimes just doing one can kind of perk you up. And also if you haven't done it before, there's something almost a little exhilarating and like, I don't know what to expect about it that can kind of perk you up. Like when you're in that rut, anything that kind of shakes things up tends to be really good for kind of helping remotivate you. I definitely agree with that. How how should people balance, though? One last question. How should people balance uh, working out every day to keep that going versus when is it good to take a break and and like rest? Because that, that's tough for yeah. me to balance. Yeah. Well, I think that not everyone can or should work out every day. I think given you, we all have to assess our level of fitness, our level of obsession, <laughs> with Peloton, how we feel when we work out, how we feel when we don't work out, especially right now during these more stressful times. And, you know, there's also a lot of people will do an active rest day where it's like, okay, yeah, I want to work out, but I don't like I, I feel really burnt. And it's a good time for me to do a really gentle yoga class or a meditation class. And that's a really great way to kind of stay connected with the community and to still get that checkbox on your calendar that we all love. I, I, I had one night where like it's very unusual for me at this point to not work out, but it was just kind of like one of those difficult days where I was doing a ton of media. I was doing TV and radio and seeing clients and this and that. And literally at 10 50, I was like, I'm not going to get my check box. And I was like, I'm doing a five minute meditation. <laughs> I was just like sitting there and like it, oh, before midnight, I made it in just <laughs> on fire. But sometimes that's what we, what we have to do. And it's like, for me, getting that checkbox was good self-care. Doing the meditation, good self-care. Not working out that day, good self-care. And I think that we always have to make sure that we keep our goals and our exercise plans within reason and that they remain positive, not punitive or punishing in any way, except Tom. <laughs> <laughs> the only exception, because I want to get that man on the treadmill <laughs> for even five to 10 minutes. And if it feels punishing, I'm okay with that. <laughs> She's like, you deserve punishment. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. Uh, we really appreciate I- it. And where can people find you in the interim before next week? Everyone can find me on social media at Dr. Jen Mann, two ends on Jen, two ends on man, and also on my website, Dr. Jen, but spelled out D O C T O R J E N N dot com. Awesome. Thank you. BuzzFeed had an article uh, talking about the reaction of Peloton delivery workers at the beginning, I guess, of the COVID crisis. It was at the beginning. And and when I say the beginning, it was before the United States really shut down, before we shut down flights from other countries. Like gotcha. this is so very early, very early. Yeah. And uh, people were not I mean, there was so much we didn't know. Right. You know, and they were scared. Some delivery drivers, I guess what happened is somehow BuzzFeed got pictures of or screenshots of an internal bulletin board like a 
like a um, online bulletin board where people okay. could talk about things. And so they saw the comments and there were people that were feeling like the steps that were at that time, they were still delivering treads at that time. They were still delivering bikes and houses. Right. Nothing had changed. And so it's important to note that as you read this article. Right. Um, and we had talked about this a little bit. We at did. The time. We did. Yeah. Um, and so they were frustrated because they felt like they didn't know what was going to happen. They're going into they're being forced to go into people's houses and they don't know what the outcome is going to be. I will also say that I've had I posted this earlier in the week. I've had employees reach out to me uh, privately and they were very defensive of Peloton. They said that Peloton took steps very quickly. Right. As soon as people started saying, I'm concerned, those concerns were mitigated immediately. Gotcha. Um, and so I realized that, you know, I don't work there. I don't know all the details. I can only tell you what what Peloton employees are telling me. Right. And uh, obviously I can't reveal those sources, but, you know, they really felt that this was a small minority of people who were frustrated. Yeah. And they also felt like BuzzFeed kind of took advantage of an old screenshot right they're cherry picking things from three months ago yeah i mean hey it was a hoax back then right (laughs) um and uh i will also say we had a lot of people post on like post comments about this that they were feeling frustrated that i posted it and like well i i would have been happy to have a job and like forget you you know whatever i I think it's important to remember that everybody is in a unique situation with covid this is something the world's never really faced before right so or at least not this part of the world yes yeah Yeah. and i meant the world globally like there have been pockets but i don't feel like there's ever been a time that the world united has dealt with it on this global of a scale because even when we had the spanish flu of 1918 the world was smaller in that we didn't have the kind of travel right that we do today or the kind of ability to talk to each other yeah. in other parts of the world yeah so even if they were going through it we didn't know what they were going through on a daily right on a daily scale like we do now so i just feel like it's a it's a unique situation and um Everybody's had to change things. Everybody's had to to move things around. And so I just think that it's important to realize that and be thoughtful of other people's feelings. Yeah, there's no real uh, for a, a company like Peloton or any company ultimately, but there's no real playbook. Like a lot of times if there's some sort of crisis or national uh, emergency, there's a, you know, hit by tornadoes or there's a hurricane coming. You've dealt with it before. There's a playbook you can kind of go to. What did we do during Katrina? What not? But like there isn't one for this. Everybody's kind of winging it. Agreed. Fortune.com had an uh, had an article featuring Robin Arzan. Yes, it was a 23 minute interview with Robin Arzan uh, talking about how she got into Peloton Fitness, how Peloton reacts to certain things, um, what it's like, kind of a day to day schedule. It was a really good article. One thing that I really wanted to point out for all of our listeners is that she was point blank asked a question that our very own Peloton profit profitized several months ago. Yes. The prophet said that they felt that there was a nutrition program coming. Interesting. And so the reporter said to Robin, there have been rumors about a Peloton nutrition program. What's that going to be? And and Robin said, there's nothing I can announce today. Hmm. And she said a couple other sentences, too. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. But it was interesting because... I mean, she didn't deny it. Right. She just all. said, I'm not going to tell you about it now. Yeah. So, you know, it's been a while since we've heard from the prophet. So I just wanted to point out. Yeah. Prophet still has game. Still chalking up wins. That's right. Business Insider has an article uh, about what Peloton and Equinox and how that all works. I couldn't read it. Okay. I'm just going to say I, it was behind a paywall. I couldn't read it. I did oh, actually, sorry. I did actually click on it to read it. I tried to do some show prep. The one thing I clicked on <laughs> behind a paywall and I was like, screw it. I'm not reading anything. Now. <laughs> I was mad. Went off in a huff. Did you? Yeah. Well, Give me enough time. I'll go off in a minute and a huff. <laughs> uh, let me, let me reframe this conversation. This article was actually about how basically all gyms post COVID are going to have to figure out some kind of way to do digital content. Like that's just a fact. Right. There's a new study out that um, 
they're not publishing the study because you got to pay for it. Sure. So I didn't read that because it's a much more expensive paywall than Business Insider uh, Prime reading. But <laughs> let me tell you that it's expensive. And uh, so they were saying that the studies look like it's pointing to if you're going to be a gym, you better figure out some kind of digital content. And so uh, even after people come back, like some some of the examples they gave were like, OK, we have, let's say, a Zumba class, but we're only going to let 10 people be in it instead of 40. I'm making up numbers. here, sure, sure. And uh, and also um, they're going to have it streaming on uh, some kind of platform so that two days a week you can go to your Zumba class. But, you know, the other days you can still take it at home. So that's that's at least one method that gyms are taking. But the outcome was just like you're going to need to figure out something. Right. There's just no getting around. It. Boy, it seems like there would be some sort of a business model and that someone would develop to where like you would provide this content to the gyms that they could then rebrand and offer to their consumers. You know, uh, I think there's so many mom and pop gyms. I don't know that they can. I mean, uh, that's a whole different thing. I yeah. mean, not quickly. That doesn't mean they won't get there. Right. Uh, I remember when I was going to Anytime Fitness, which is super inexpensive, yeah. and, and th- their model is for people who want to come in anytime day or night right and uh you walk in and, and it's like you have a key fob nobody's there or one person's there maybe right so they had like a room that you could go in and take videos on demand so you could go in and do in theory a spin class or you could go in and do uh, all kinds of like different classes and it was up on this big screen so that somehow exists i mean it's possible i just i don't know what the costs are and what the you know you're going to have to keep it pretty fresh to compete with live streams from these people because keep in mind you go in and you see your favorite trainer if you're still going to the gym you you have a connection to the people there you want to see that person host a class not just some random guy out of la Exactly. Yeah, that's fair. That's my theory. Sure. I, mean, I could be wrong. I mean, you know more about exercise than I do. That's what we all know. <laughs> but not about human nature, because I constantly get that wrong. <laughs> Other connected fitness. Got news on hydro. Yeah. Uh, they they got hydrated with cash. <laughs> yeah, they did. Twenty five million dollars. Man, I want to be friends with L. Catterton. I know, right? Yeah. Because for anybody out there who doesn't know, they have backed Peloton. They have backed Tonal. I don't know if they backed Fight Camp, but they have backed a lot of yeah. major brands. So they seem to really like the connected fitness space. They do. I feel like they need to talk to a connected fitness podcast I to really round out all the things they're invested in. That would be a nice compliment to their current catalog of investments it would so if anybody knows anyone at uh l catterton or <laughs> lvmh fund hit me up yes but uh, but yeah so <laughs> but Hy- seriously but hydro has to really be uh kind of staring down the barrel of what peloton's going to do because i mean it's kind of a uh you know i don't think it's a big secret anymore that they're working on a rower and yeah. so whenever that comes out what does that mean for hydro it's interesting that people still want to throw money at them knowing that Peloton's working on one. It is interesting. Um, But I will say that, you know, people that I've talked to that uh, have a hydro and, you know, we've had a gentleman on uh, to talk about it. You know, they speak so glowingly of hydro. They really like that outdoor feel to it. It feels like you're really rowing on the water. And obviously, guys, I have no idea what a Peloton rowing class is going to look like. I I don't know what it's going to feel like, what it's going to look like. Peloton is constantly like totally blowing my mind and out of like my expectations are always blown i never have any idea so i just i don't know what but it seems to me 25 million dollars is both a lot and not a lot at the same time it's probably a lot for hydro but it's probably not a lot for l catterton Okay, that's fair. But also, I don't think it's a lot for Peloton. And this article specifically says they got this money to take on Peloton. It's it's in the headline. So that's interesting. Right. That's I I, I just twenty five million dollars doesn't seem like it could take on Peloton at this point. It doesn't. But if you look at it like take on Peloton rower, maybe it can. I guess. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that's what this signals. Does this signal Peloton rower is like on the brink and they somehow know this or does it does it just indicate fitness connected fitness in general right you know i I don't know 
it's interesting. It will be interesting to watch. I almost wonder if Hydra will be like, uh, what's the the bike thing that like the outdoor cyclists really like for training that you can Swift. S- there we go. Um, I wonder if it might even shake out that Hydro is more like Swift for like the just the really the people who are super passionate about rowing. And then the Peloton one will be for like kind of the average person that just wants to hop on that, that isn't actually trying to go out and get in a boat and row. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. But are there enough rowers for them to you know what I mean? <laughs> It's it's hard to believe that there's as many rowers as there are people who use treadmills and bikes. Sure. Uh, but, you know, rowing has been on the rise. So I, I don't know. Again, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out. Yes, it will. So let's talk about something that's a little uh, not Peloton related. Well, it's very not Peloton related. Yeah. A little bit more personal. It is. So we are doing a thing on July 2nd. Yes. With... An artist that you're a big fan of. Yes. Shannon Curtis. I, I like her too. Just yeah. To be fair. But but like I found her long right, before right. you did. She's your your thing. Yes. And I'm just along for the ride. Yeah. But uh but she's really grown on you over the years. She though. has. And so uh we did a thing with him last year. We didn't talk about it on the show, and it was a house concert. So what's what is fascinating about Shannon Curtis and, and her husband Jamie is that they don't play clubs or anything like that. They do House concerts and they go they literally will drive from one end of the country and back just doing a concert they drive do a concert in somebody's house drive again do a concert in somebody's house drive and they just keep doing that and uh she puts out an album a year and she's had videos go viral and yeah and she had songs used in did she have a song used in what pretty little liars yeah it, it? she's had a couple of songs used in uh a couple of different shows yeah pretty little liars was definitely one of them um but she's probably most famous for having written the song that I commissioned for you <laughs> that uh, we shared on our Facebook page that people liked. That yes, I, for our anniversary. I had her write a special song just for you. Oh, and it's amazing. All my friends, all my guy friends were just like, you son of a bitch. Like, <laughs> how are we supposed to, like, here's a card and some chocolates. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, Tom got his wife a song. Well, Well, they can do it, too. Yeah, she's available. But, you know, here's the thing about Shannon and Jamie. They're just lovely people. They are. And And, and, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, but the problem they're running into is you can't do house concerts right now. Right. And so last year we didn't bother to tell you because you don't probably live close enough to us to come to our house for a concert. Right. Where this year they're doing virtual house concerts. Yes. And so we get to have up to 30 people that we get to invite. So if anybody out there listening is interested in this, please email me and I will send you an invite. I'm also going to put this up on Facebook. But I want people to reach out to me because we have to cap it at 30. Uh, If there's enough interest, though, Shannon and Jamie have talked to me about the possibility if potentially we could if they have time, we could do another concert in August. So um, if their schedule doesn't fill up. So I'm super excited to be able to offer this to you. Shannon is just an amazing songwriter and uh, she has such a unique voice and just sitting down with them always makes me so happy. Yeah. Like they're just good people. And if you're wondering if you'll like her stuff or not, like you yeah. don't want to commit to, you know, all of her stuff is on Spotify or YouTube, wherever you find that stuff, you can find her stuff. So, um, so you can research her before you make that choice. Absolutely. That's a really good point, Tom. And here's the thing. This concert is not like you have to give us a certain amount of money to come to it. What Shannon and Jamie do is they have a completely donation based system. So, So you at the end of the concert, you pay what you feel it was worth. You know, that's it. There's no pressure. Just whatever you feel is worth. And uh, it's a very special and wonderful experience. I cannot wait to do this again. I'm so excited. And it's a very special opportunity for everybody to be able to do it online. So cool. So reach out if you're interested. Yes. Back to Peloton. Yes. Peter Shankman, past guest Peter Shankman. Yes. Is hosting a virtual entrepreneur event. Featuring keynote speaker, closing keynote speaker, Olivia Amato. So uh, how can people find all that if they want to take part? They can go to shankminds.com. There's a bunch of information out there. There are still tickets available. So you are able to uh, be part of it if you would like to see exactly what Olivia has to say. And we'll post that on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the clip out. And it'll be in the newsletter if you sign up for it at the clip And it's next week. So don't delay. 
And there's uh, yet another fundraiser coming up for a race for unity. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, So four is spelled like uh, four for golf, F-O-R-E. Okay. And uh, the reason I say that is because this is all about golf. There's a bunch of it started with like a bunch of PGA, LP, PGA folks that came together and they all love their Pelotons and they wanted to give back. So they put this race together. There's going to be two teams led by two amazing leaders within their community and uh, they're going to all be taking the Alex Toussaint class 10 a.m. Eastern on Saturday and um, you are able to be part of it if you would like to be all you have to do is go to raceforunity.com new content there's a new artist collaboration featuring Desmond Child yeah, so I, I had to look him up, but he's it, a big deal songwriter. Yeah. So his catalog is ginormous. Right. It includes which Peloton included in their their little blog. It says Aerosmith, Cher, Kiss, Michael Bolton. And they hey, go ahead. I just want to say a lot of times when somebody lists the artists that they've written for, it's like an album track that you've never heard of unless you're a diehard fan. But just for perspective, Kiss, he wrote I Was Made for Loving You. Wow. Right. Uh, what uh, Bon Jovi? You give love a bad name. What? Living on a prayer. What? Bad medicine. Ah. Uh, Aerosmith. Dude looks like a lady. Yes. Angel. What it takes. Crazy. He wrote Poison for Alice Cooper. He wrote. Uh, and then and then after all that, right? Oh, he also wrote I Was Made for Loving You by by Kiss. Yeah, you said that one. Did I? Oh, sorry. He There's wrote, so many. He and then he and then oddly enough, on the flip side of that, he wrote "I Hate Myself for Loving You" for Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. No, he did it. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and then so you get all this: Kiss, Joan Jett, Bon Jovi, Aerosmith, Alice Cooper. He also wrote "Live in La Vida Loca." What? <laughs> and I should say, in all fairness, he's a co-writer on most of those songs. Like he's yeah. not the sole writer, but but still, but he also was like the, the you know behind Live in La Vida Loca. Like one of these things is not like the other. Well, and he's <laughs> also uh, Michael Bolton, so that's a very different feel than the rest yeah, of those songs. How can too. we be lovers? Yeah. So I am super excited about this one. Now, this will have aired by the time you hear this episode. So. It's going to be so if you haven't taken it, go look for it. Friday, six nineteen, six PM. That's going to be a Jen Sherman special Friday night ride. We hardly ever get a Friday night e- a Friday evening ride with Jen Sherman. So there's that. This uh, listing those artists, it's like this has Jen Sherman written all it over it. It does. It's <laughs> perfect. And then Andy Spear is doing a run on Friday at eight AM Eastern and Aditi Shaw is doing a yoga flow Thursday, three thirty PM Eastern. I'm really curious to see what the yoga flow looks like. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. Like, will it be like on the slower end of things or will it be like reimagined versions? I'm very curious. I've checked that out. There is a boutique drop. I'm worried because you have written here summer one. Yeah. Like, there are more coming. Well, yeah. They're just done. No. There's only one summer. We should be done now, right? No. It's no. There'll be a summer too here in a couple of weeks. Well, I, no, there's not two summers. There's not two summers, but there's two collections that drop. Mm. Mm. I'm not sure about this. Well, if it makes you feel any better, this this collection was not made for me. I have heard that it sold out super fast and lots of people loved it, but it's just not my color scheme. And it was a lot of Lululemon, which some people just adore. They go crazy over it. I am not a fan. I just, I don't like it. Sure. Um, But... They sold out super fast again. Lots of complaints about it. I just want to go on the record and say this. We had a huge time period where things were not selling out fast. Can we remember that these orders had to be placed long before COVID happened to get the quantities in? And then COVID happened and they gained like seven times the (laughs) amount of people that they thought they were going to gain. And so it to me, it makes sense that they cannot keep up with the demand at this point. I don't think people realize the amount of time you have to place these kind of orders. Yeah. You know, and so they may not know that. Yeah. There's a significant lead time. Right. So, you know, I'm not saying that's the only reason, but I will say that when I posted that comment on Instagram, Jill fully liked it. So I'm going to say <laughs> <laughs> she at least supported my thoughts. <laughs> but you might want to spread the news because there's a lot of negativity about it. And we had this negativity a couple years ago. You might remember that, Tom. People were really upset. Totally, yeah. And uh, I just feel like it got better and no one noticed it got better. And then it got bad again. And the, everyone noticed it got bad again. Because they had a huge spike in membership. Yeah. And so, I just. And Jill Foley backed you up. Yeah. Or as as I like to call her, Jill Foe. Jill Foe. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Jilly. Yeah. <laughs> Jilly bean. <laughs> <laughs> so uh robin is working with b sprout it is called b sprout i was like are we sure it's not b sprout no i mean that doesn't make any sense either but <laughs> so b sprout is the name of the company and then sprout is the name of their product okay and, and so the particular product that robin is working with them on is a plant based milk and she is super excited about it because it's all the things that she loves she's a vegan she doesn't eat sure. meat. she eats very clean um and with having diabetes it's super important for her to you know you work out the way robin does you have to make sure what you're putting into your body works right. and that you can't just eat whatever you want to eat right and so um she's not me <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and she takes it super, super seriously. So um, she says that she will be sharing her smoothie, some smoothie recipes very soon. And she's excited. And it's a paid partnership. So congrats to Robin. Absolutely. I'm just laughing at the phrase plant based milk. <laughs> I'm, I'm picturing a fern with nipples. <laughs> no. What? No. Don't do that. Poinsettia? No. <laughs> I don't want any nipples on plants. <laughs> no. No. Because if it's cold, there are points to that. Stop it. <laughs> I feel like somebody somewhere was drinking milk and just spit it out. <laughs> but was it plant based milk? I bet it wasn't. Not yet. It will be soon. Oh my God. Do not put nipples on a plant, Tom. <laughs> I didn't put them there. Well, in your head, you did. I'm not a botanist. <laughs> Tunde has a new Instagram series called Speak. Yes. Uh, so it's it's kind of serious. Right. Uh, it's a storytelling series. And that's a uh, crystal code for don't make jokes here, Tom. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Well, I, I really I know that you totally respect Tunde as much as I do. But yeah. this is this is something that she's super serious about. Sure. So I just wouldn't want her. Yeah, to think. totally. I'm so she is creating this new spe- series called Speak. And what she's doing is it's all storytelling. So she has people come on the show and talk about experiences in their own words, things they've gone through. When she did her Speak Up ride, she talked about uh, that Brene Brown has a quote that like, you cannot know what somebody else is going through. I'm totally paraphrasing, so I am messing it up. <laughs> Unless you believe the experience the way that they tell you they lived it. And so so Toon Day got the idea, let's have people come on and tell their experiences. So the first guest that she had was Jess Sims. And uh, so that's going to be amazing because both of those ladies are amazing. So you might want to take a look at an Instagram and see uh, the new series. Check it out for yourselves and let us know what you think. So we haven't checked it on Fight Camp in a little bit. How's that going? Uh, it's going great. Uh, I took a new class just the other day and it was on, I was back to the prospect path taking one of those classes, but um, I got to do a bunch of uppercuts and uh, I did not realize that um, you really wear your arms out whenever you have to like do this upward motion compared to out like it's a completely different way to use your arm and uh guess what it's exhausting yeah i guess that stands to reason there you don't have a lot of um call in your everyday life to like go up with your arm like that right unless you're like a bouncer well and i you know obviously i'm new to this so i'm still trying to kind of figure out like you're supposed to hit in the same place over and over again right so like you in theory the way they explain it is you would like to punch straight out like as your normal punches and you'd want to do your uppercut in the same place so it's a lot higher than what i feel like i would do naturally but but because that's not where the person's face is so you know i mean if you wanted to be effective that would be helpful it's not the only place you could hit people honey well that's where i'm gonna hit them <laughs> Going if i'm straight using for the my face. knee i'll do something else i have to be nice to you you do luckily i'm i already am nice you to are. you but you are but yeah there's lots of other places to hit people okay you could punch them right in the elbow <laughs> <laughs> well, they, that might hurt me do they have any exercises for elbow punching i saw zero elbow punching mm. exercises seems like a missed opportunity <laughs> so so <laughs> So, uh, so that's what you've been up to. It is. And uh, let me tell you yet again, those planks and punching, whoo, that's a workout. It sounds it. It's a great thing to add on to my strength. It's a perfect complement to that. Awesome. Well, uh, if you're interested in Fight Camp, you can get it, get yourself one at joinfightcamp.com. Yes. And 
you know, it's uh, unlike a lot of the other Connect Fitness, it doesn't require a lot of installation. You can do it yourself. It's very simple. You and I did it. Yeah, it says you a did lot. It while I watched. Well, yeah. While you just said hold this, and then I did. Yeah. But um, but it's really simple, and it can get delivered to your doorstep. Like you don't have to have anybody come in your house or anything like that. So, yep. uh, it's something to think about when you're making your choices right now with what you want to add to your workout regime. So uh, check them out at joinfightcamp.com. Checking in with the Peloton community. So uh, joining us today via the magic of Skype a phone is <laughs> Ariel Brown. Hey, how's it going? Hey, it's going well. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Now that Skype is yes. being cooperative, I'm doing much better. Lots of technical difficulties on the front end. But so. hey, everything's recording. So knock wood. Knock wood. We're <laughs> we're not gonna be like, hey, Ariel, let's record again just for fun. <laughs> not that that's ever well, happened. Hopefully, yeah, I mean, you know, that I, I tried that with my SATs, taking it a second time, and it was not a good outcome. So <laughs> let's try not to yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, so I like to always start out the conversation by finding out where you found Peloton. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was November of 2018 and I was down in DC um, doing a project for work. And uh, I went to my cousin's house who lives in that area. I typically live in um, outside of Boston. So I was down there and she said, you got to come over. You got to try the Peloton. I know how much you love spinning. And I did. And she was right. I mean, I used to spin a couple times a week at a gym and uh, I absolutely loved it. Like that was the thing that worked for me. I actually have had knee issues. Uh, and so um, cycling, indoor cycling has just been wonderful for that. So I tried her bike. I did the five minute intro and then there's like two five minute intro videos in that first program when you log on. I did them and I was like, holy crap. <laughs> and then she, you know, she was like, well, what kind of music do you like? And I was like, okay, how about hip hop? And she's like, all right, hip hop, 45 minutes. Here's the 13,000 classes you can choose from. And guess what? They're all celebrity instructors that are like the top of their game. And, you know, it was just like, Seemed a little too good to be true, um, <laughs> but it wasn't. And here I am, about 350 rides later, and you know I totally drank the Kool Aid, and I'm I'm in. So I'm in it. so you like went home and bought it immediately, or did it take you yep. a while? Oh wow, that's great. Nope. That's you were like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So actually, it was so uh, I um, yeah. So the for the project that I was doing for work, I had to be down in DC for Halloween week and I have two little kids and that was really tough oh, not yeah. to be around my kids for Halloween. So when I came home, I was like, I was like, I'm doing something for myself. I'm doing something for my family. And I just bought it the day I got home. That's so, awesome. Good for you. Yeah. And and so since you were taking spin classes already, d- did you feel like you were already pretty fit did or, no. or was like Peloton? Okay, <laughs> that's a big N O. All right. Um, <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think you know, fit is such a relative term, right? Sure. So I was taking spin classes. I enjoyed them. I was fit enough that I was able to get through a forty-five to sixty-minute spin class, stand up on the bike, things that um, I know some people can't do. And so I was fitting that way. I think I've probably run a mile three times in my whole life, and it was at least 20 years ago. So, you know, I'm no marathon runner, um, <laughs> but I can, you know, I can get through uh, a spin class. And, you know, so when I got the bike, I started in power zone pretty early. So I took uh, an FTP test and uh, my FTP has increased, I think, by about 30% since I took that initial test. That's awesome. Um, That's a great yeah. result. Yeah, yeah. So it was great. So that, I mean, you know, that that was another thing. So my, my cousin is a data nerd like I am. And so she was touting that as another positive for Peloton because I just love looking at my numbers. And <laughs> I have, uh, you know, I have pace line to like graph everything and put it in colors and like, you know, just get all, all the way down into the, the details of, um, of the progress made. So, yeah, I mean, you know, your question about fit, fit is relative. I'm more fit than when I got it. Let's put it that way. Okay. So since you were, uh, since you were taking spin classes on the regular and then you bought the bike, what, how much of an overlap was there 
between the time you bought the bike and the time you just completely bailed on the gym or have you? Zero overlap. (laughs) (laughs) So I got the bike. I immediately did a ride. I actually can't remember what my first ride was, which is pretty sad. It was some 80s ride. So I did a ride and I was just like, oh, I don't need a gym anymore. And then, you know, and I've also done a lot of the other content, the weightlifting classes. I've done, you know, the outdoor walks and the, uh, you know, core and body weight strength and, and all that. So I just felt like, you know, I went on Amazon, I bought a rack of weights and I was like, what else do I do at the gym? I lift weights and I do spinning. So there was absolutely no need for me to continue to pay for a gym membership. I would say I, I spun in a gym for maybe 10, 12 years. And during that time, there was only one instructor that came even like within the same universe of (laughs) talent and inspiration that the Peloton teachers uh, give to me. Yeah. Um, This guy, John, he actually used to show up with uh, DJ equipment and would do like a live mix in the (laughs) class in front of, uh, you know, in front of everyone. And I was just like, holy crap, people do this. And now with Peloton, it's like every day I feel like I'm in a, you know, either I literally am there with a live DJ or, you know, pretty damn close. I wonder what that guy does now. Yeah, really? Maybe he he still does that. Yeah, maybe. I mean, he he went to uh, some like super duper fancy gym out in like one of the fanciest towns outside of Boston. He's a spin coach now. Gotcha. Um, But God knows, you know, he's probably like ascended to some other plane yeah. with, um, <laughs> where he like hangs out and with Robin Arzon or something. They, they are pretty special though, right? The uh, Peloton instructors. I mean, they, they do have a lot of talent that uh, you, it's special. You don't see it just everywhere. You've got to have a lot of, a lot of qualities. You, you're not just a good spin instructor. You have to be able to pay attention to what's going on on the screen, what's going on in the class, uh, be able to do shout outs, be able to listen in the earpiece to what production is telling you. I mean, there's so many things and yeah. have a great personality, a big personality yeah. that can come through the, mm-hmm. the screen. That's a lot. That's a lot of things that not yeah. just anybody can do incredibly unique it's like some sort of mix i mean they're sort of like politicians but and also like you know reality show stars and also like you know pop stars i mean right you don't you don't get that a lot no that no, makes a person well it's a good thing you were like month to month at the time or whatever you weren't one of those gyms that had you super locked in right yeah yep yeah, it wasn't an issue. <laughs> well, and it good. ended up being it ended up being the same amount. It was, you know, Peloton's forty bucks and my, my gym was forty bucks after significant subsidizing by my company. So um, wow. you know, that all came out in the wash. Wow. So I did, mean that's a happy ending. Did you have to pay additional for the spin classes or was that built into the gym membership? That was built in. Oh, okay. Well, that's a, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. that's a good deal though. It then. Is. I mean it is. you know what, let's be honest, they were crappy. I mean, right. was, yeah, and not and they were not on demand and like and you had to you drive know. there and you had to sign up and, right. and you, exactly and like like and i and there were like people sweating next to me that i didn't want to be smelling while i was on the you'd, ride, you you know? you'd have the rona right now if it, if, you, the rona. if you were still in that champ well yeah, we don't know that. Okay. But <laughs> I'm trying to make it seem like an even better purchase. I think she's happy with it, Tom. I don't think you have to talk I, her yeah, into it. I, I mean, want her to be happier. Thing, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you, I mean, if you talk to my friends, colleagues, the lady next to me in the supermarket line, like, they know that I am so thrilled to have a damn Peloton. I like, I just it. <laughs> can't shut up about it. Yep. Yep. Uh, I totally understand that feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, I've been walking my dog a lot in the mornings and I realized that I am basically just a Peloton walking billboard. Yeah. All the time. Like, I was like, <laughs> like, cause of all your gear. Yeah. Cause I like, I'll put on a jacket and it's like, oh, it's, it's cold outside. So now I need a heavier one. Also Peloton. Jacket's Peloton. <laughs> Oh, it's it's warm outside today. Well, then I'll just wear my leggings and tank top that I was working out in. So it's pretty much just all Peloton. 
all yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I actually only have I have my Century shirt, and then I have a hoodie that I got because I uh, it was you know I referred somebody and they bought I yeah. got the store credit. Yeah, and I was I, I'll tell you. $88 hoodies are super comfy. They really I've are. I've never owned an $88 hoodie. Right? It's like, it's it's at that perfect softness the second you get it. Like, you've already washed it a million times, you know? Like, right. it's that kind of It's perfect. not pulling up, and it's not, right. you know, like, stretched in weird ways. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, the older I get, the more I'm like, and not with everything, but with a lot of things... You get what you pay for. It's. I mean, there I, are I certain some, some things truth to that where you're just paying for a brand name. I mean, that's certainly yeah, a thing. absolutely. But like, but yeah, I've like if to buy the nicer shoes or whatever. They're almost always going to be more comfortable and last longer. And yeah. Yep. Now you get to a tipping point where oh sure where it's yeah. a six hundred dollar pair of shoes. Well then no yeah but. It's- no, now you're just paying for the brand. Right. Yeah. There, there, you, there is that tipping point, but and I know some people would certainly say that about about Peloton because it's not cheap with the right. uh, yeah. the clothes, but um, but I do think that they they are of good quality and I like them. So <laughs> I like the shoes too. I mean the bike too. I mean that's the other thing that I I feel like is the massive the you know difference between the gym and having your Peloton is just yes. the smoothness and the comfort. And I, I was actually out on a, um, do you call it a pedal boat, a paddle boat? Anyways, it's the b- kind of boat that you pedal. Right. Paddle, yeah, uh-huh. a paddle boat. Yeah, but isn't that weird? Shouldn't it is. It be it's a counterintuitive. Paddle boat? There's pedals over here. I'm going to call it a paddle boat. It's all boat. kinds of things in right. the English language that don't make sense. You, yeah, a, yeah, a paddle boat too. should be a canoe. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's a paddle boat. <laughs> okay. There, there's, there's no paddle. On the paddle boat, right? <laughs> and there's no paddles on the paddle boat, so you know where where do we, where are we co- going with this? I don't know. And you park in a driveway and drive in a parkway. Oh my god! Okay, so anyway, <laughs> so just being pedaling on the paddle boat today, I was like, oh, my knees hurt, and like my, you know, and like the pedals, like you know, they're not smooth in a 360 degree direction, and I was like, man, I wish I was on my peloton. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe if they I, ever get I, that rower, they can merge the two. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, or I could just like put my peloton on a barge and like somehow just like float down a, a lake we on had, a peloton. We what? had a guy who did that. We interviewed a guy that did that. That's right. <laughs> what? Yeah, uh, I am totally blanking on his name, but he had a um, he was doing a charity fundraiser for a water project, and what he did is uh, this this. It was Todd Phillips. Thank you. Because it was the same name as the director of The Hangover. That's right. That's right. And uh, whenever he was doing this fundraiser, he was living on a boat and and he did it for as long as it took to raise the amount of money that they had earmarked so that they could get water to everybody in the area where they were trying to to do their project. And uh, so he wanted to have a way to exercise and he loved Peloton. So he took his Peloton out to the boat and like bolted it to the boat and it was great and we interviewed him while he was on the boat it was really cool <laughs> the the real question is did he rig something up so that he could power the boat with the peloton no he did not do okay. that he did not do that uh the, he was like docked in the water so he ah. was able to like get to electricity and stuff but not like tons of it so he still had to be very he he had to be frugal with when he was on the peloton he couldn't just be on it all day <laughs> got it right anyway sorry got off a whole tangent yeah. there so what yeah. have you been up to while you have been uh staying at home during this wonderful quarantine we got going yes. on yes boy what a journey it's been these past couple months i bet yeah i actually so on march was it march 1st god it all oh, blurs time together. has no meaning anymore. I know. It? I know. Um, so March 1st, I actually got diagnosed with flu A. Okay. And I had uh, horrible respiratory issues because of it. And I like, you know, I was, oh, so I have asthma. Just, you know, I have chronic asthma. So when I got the flu, it just made breathing like an incredibly hard task. So um, it was not until almost the end of April that I was really able to get back on the bike and Whoa. like start to recover. So it was a good six to eight weeks between getting the flu and, and being able to get back on the bike, which was very, very hard for me because, you know, this is I use uh, Peloton for, you know, my mood. I use it for, you know, 
feeling like I'm doing something active. I mean, it, it, it's such a huge piece of how I sort of stay balanced in my life now. Sure. And so I had all what I would consider time on my hands, even though I do have two small children and a full-time job. But that aside, <laughs> uh, I had some time on my hands and I had some anxiety on my hands. And so um, I started a nonprofit. So, um, you know, sure, I, I guess <laughs> it was... Yeah, I know. Like, what What else are you going to yeah. do, right? Yeah. That's, well, that's the logical well, next step. Well, <laughs> duh. <laughs> I'm, sure, right. I'm sure everybody else did that, too. Yeah, yeah I've got, exactly. We've got like six of them. We don't, just don't even talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so tell us about about your project, the, not pro- the sure. non-for-profit. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I have a good friend, uh, Dan, who I now talk about as Dr. Dan. And he is uh, he's an ICU physician and uh, an anesthesiologist. And so his uh, shifts involve, you know, very long hours in the hospital and doing a lot of uh, end of life care, very severe, uh, intensive Ooh. patient care. That's got to be hard. Um, super hard. Yeah. So he and I had actually been talking quite a bit even before COVID about his residence. So one of the um, pieces of his job is he is the program director for the anesthesiology residents. And um, so he has 80 residents, anesthesiologists, who are really just starting their career as um, intensive care doctors, as anesthesiologists. And so... um, you know, he and I have been talking for quite a while about how to um, increase wellness and uh, resources for sort of staying balanced uh, in their lives in this, you know, really hard period. And so, you know, that was just sort of an ongoing conversation. I remember we were at my son's fourth birthday party and we were shooting around ideas to sort of, you know, help uh, keep his residence sane and and then we were uh, on the phone later. It was uh, actually it was March 21st. Yeah. So it was three weeks into my lovely flu experience. Um, and uh, I said, is there, a, you know, like things are really crazy for you guys now. I, I know that. And, you know, is there anything I can do to help? You know, he gave me a call. He said, um, you know, I've been thinking a lot about how to help my residents get support and, you know, particularly support for their mental health. You know, maybe you can start brainstorming about what to do with that. So I actually put out a call on social media. I I created this Google form and it was basically just said, are you a mental health practitioner? Would you be willing to volunteer uh, to help out residents? And, you know, the initial idea was that maybe I'd get two or three therapists who could sort of like answer calls for residents in crisis and, um, but what happened was that uh, just by posting it on social, I actually got, uh, I think I think it was 69, 67 volunteers in eight hours. Wow. Um, yeah. So these were therapists, licensed therapists that wanted to give free therapy to um, frontline medical workers. So it occurred to me that <laughs> obviously there is a huge response in the community going on. How can I help? And what skills do I have that I can contribute to to help the the helpers, really? You know, because there are people, um, you know, the the folks in the hospitals now are are just having this unprecedented, overwhelming and seemingly unending experience and um, they need support. So, you know, things really snowballed very quickly from there. First, it was just I sort of whittled down the 67 responses that I got to 15. Uh, I recruited a friend of mine named Jean, who's a project manager. And I was like, okay, I'm just like this, you know, data nerd who happens (laughs) to have a lot of friends who are shrinks. Like I need help (laughs) figuring out how to actually like implement this into an actual thing. You know, like, what do I do? How do I get it to people? Like, how do I make it look pretty so they don't ignore it? And, so she put together a PDF and that PDF went over to the residents in uh, Dan's department and uh, it was really well received. And we almost immediately started to get calls and questions and, you know, responses like, wow, this is such an incredibly important thing you're doing. People are really suffering and uh, that are on the front line and having a service like this is just really uh, fills a gap. 
So that was really exciting. And then I got a, I actually got a call from someone at the Boston Globe who wanted to do a story on us. Nice. And I, as soon as that happened, I was like, oh, shit, this is going to be big. <laughs> <laughs> hold on to your um, hats. <laughs> exactly. Hold on to your hats. So then I actually uh, I reached out to a friend of mine, another Pelotoner. Her little board name is Little Lemonade. She was like, make sure you say Little Lemonade on the clip out. So it's Little Lemonade. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so she actually got a tech team together. So she used to live in the Bay Area, was in um, like web design and search engine optimization, all the stuff. I have no idea what it means. Um, <laughs> but she got all these dudes together, a dude who worked for Facebook, somebody who worked for Wikipedia. They were all gung-ho about the project. They developed a website. Boom, bam, bing. Boston Globe came out. An uh, article came out. And uh, we had this working website. And then now, Zoom to a month later, uh, we have 275 uh, mental health practitioners in the database. We have, uh, and that covers 36 states and 36 plus DC, excuse me. Uh, and then we have people calling those therapists from, at this point, just up and down the East Coast, and we are hoping to expand. So that's sort of the story of how it came to be. And, you know, at this point, we're really just trying to raise awareness about the program and, you know, so that people in need know about us and know uh, how easy it is to really to get in touch with uh, a therapist for free, anonymously, no insurance, just go on the website, a few clicks, and you're uh, texting or calling or emailing a therapist, whatever you prefer. So, yeah, I was going to ask you, how do, how do people interact in a way that they don't necessarily know who they're talking to? You know what I mean? Yeah. So what happens is that, so let's say there's a nurse, right, or someone working in a nursing home that is, you know, dealing with a lot of stress. Sure. And uh, she comes on the, the website she looks uh, in our directory, and the way that it's set up is it just shows you the practitioners in your own state just to deal with, like, the licensing issues. Okay. So, you know, nurse in uh, Kentucky comes on, searches Kentucky, and she sees that there's, you know, 10 practitioners in Kentucky. She sees that one of them has dealt with marital issues under stress or something like that. Like, that's the... the um, Like, focus of their... Right, exactly. Yeah. Like she that like a, one of the therapists has expertise in an area that is of concern to her. So she just picks up her phone, texts the therapist, therapist gets back, says, Yeah, let's have a session, I'm free tomorrow. Bam. So it's not necessarily anonymous between the therapist and the patient. Okay. So or the client. So and that makes sense. Really whatever happens between the therapist and the client is totally up to them. Right. And we basically just serve as a directory. Gotcha. And we help to connect people. And I don't know that you actually said what the name of it is. <laughs> yeah, that's like number one sin in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so it's called the Emotional PPE Project, and it's found at emotionalppe.org. Awesome. And yeah. Whenever you so, when you when you say PPE, I hear it as like you know the personal protection equipment. Uh, so uh, do you get a lot of questions about that? Yeah, I mean. Uh, I think, you know, that's we designed the name and we came up with that based on, I should say, we being me and Little Lemonade. I'm going to keep saying it um, <laughs> because, you know, the the term PPE does get thrown around a lot. Right. The yeah. personal protective equipment. The idea is you go into a, a hospital or you go into, you know, some uh, healthcare facility. You need to be wearing your N95 and your gloves and whatever else is going to keep you safe. But, you know, I think the idea of our service is that. It's not just the body that needs to be kept right. safe. It's the yeah. mind. It's the emotions. It's your mental health. So that's where emotional PPE comes in. So we, you know, see ourselves as sort of filling that gap and providing some PPE for your mental health. It's a great name. It is a great name. Yeah. I love it. Nice. Especially because, like, since you're kind of focused on the current situation and PPE is tied so closely to the yeah. current situation, it really, it kind of screams exactly what it's for. It does. So, right. Yeah. I mean, it, it does it without it. saying anything about the current situation yeah. in the title, but it, it's a huge nod to it right. without saying it. It so checks a lot of boxes. It does. Yeah. It does. Very smart. Yes. Very smart. So what's <laughs> been the reaction from the medical community? Are they like, obviously some people are utilizing it. Is, is there anybody that 
like they kind of shy away yeah or they feel like that's you know like i i don't need that do you get any of that kind of stuff or or would you never hear from those people so how would you know (laughs) so i think you would never hear from those people right honestly um i mean i think that what a lot of what happens during a big trauma particularly during um some you know after as well but well, you know, while there's this sort of sustained trauma going on, it's just not really tenable to think about taking time and treating yourself, sure. especially for the people that are uh, taking care of others. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's like these people are working 100 hours a week. They're totally exhausted. They're totally overwhelmed. And, you know, thinking about, oh, yeah, I'd like to, you know, sort of take a break and and talk about my feelings, like maybe <laughs> is just not that appealing right yeah. now for a lot of people. So we probably wouldn't hear from the people that aren't really willing or ready yet. In terms of direct feedback that we've gotten, the only things that we have really heard that uh, were concerns were from uh, hospital EAP programs. So, you know, when somebody works in a hospital or for a lot of companies, they have these employee assistance programs where you know, you call them up, you say, hey, I work for Mass General Hospital, I need some support. And then the hospital EAP program will potentially hook you up with a therapist. So EAP program, programs are phenomenal. They're great. You know, they they help tons and tons of people. Sure. Um, but, you know, I think that the idea from them is, you know, potentially they may see us as some sort of competition or it's what we've heard from is, is, well, the EAP therapists are highly vetted and they're part of our organization. And whereas yours are, you know, they are um, more from the community and how do we know they're good therapists and, and whatnot. But, uh, you know, again, I think that it's just it's motivated by this idea that, like, you know, we should stay within ourselves. But I think that one of the things that is an advantage about our service is that it's not connected at all with people's jobs. And, you know, some of the concern that we've heard is that, well, you know, if I go to EAP, it's how do I know it's not going to be on my record? How do I know my boss isn't going to know that I'm complaining about him? Yeah. Yeah. So so because we are not affiliated with, you know, any particular institution at all, you know, there's a firewall there. So that's an advantage. So maybe people who are a little concerned about asking for help, like maybe they think that like what they the might perception be judged, might be. Yeah, that might be yes. that might be a benefit to them. Then absolutely, I think that you know that we design the service to promote anonymity, and we design the service to be entirely separate from any entity. You know that it really relieves the person who's using the service from feeling like. It could get back to someone they know or to their boss or to their coworkers, you know, in the way that this functions is, you know, it's just entirely independent. These are therapists that happen to be in the same state as the client and, you know, that are willing to help. And we don't collect any data on anyone. Uh, you know, what happens between the therapist and the client is that's really up to them. Um, but, you know, I can't imagine that if somebody wants to stay anonymous and is in crisis that it a therapist is going to deny services because, uh, you know, we're all trained to do no harm. So do you think that people that are in medical professionals that are dealing with this horrible COVID crisis we have going on right now, uh, there's been so much focus on how amazing they are. And by the way, I think they're amazing. <laughs> like I am one of those people that think they're amazing. But like, do you think that that they might suffer from I can't ask for help because people have put me on this pedestal? Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, you know, there's been I read something recently about this idea of creating the superhero uh, image. And when you're viewed as a superhero and when you're viewed as somebody who can accomplish anything and encouraged and, you know, just seen as the person that's going to fix the world, asking for help can be very, very difficult. I mean, you know, Superman never, never saw a therapist, right? That we know Uh, of. (laughs) That we know of. But, you know, would he have been able to say that to the world? Would he have been able to say in the Daily Planet, yes, I see a therapist because I need help? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how that would have been received. That's a good point. Um, yeah. yeah, very good point. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that, you know, I know like I, I've been talking a lot with my marketing people about, you know, we get into these ridiculous wars over individual words and, 
you know, I, I just feel like it's continuously calling these folks heroes, I think is not recognizing the humanity. Yeah. And that, you know, and we are as, you know, from emotional PPE, we are trying to get away from, you know, really putting everyone on a pedestal. And, and I do think that you can still be recognized and acknowledged and thanked. And we can all maintain very high levels of gratitude for what these people are doing and help in any way we can. But, you know, we don't necessarily have to elevate them to being gods. I mean, you know, they're not uh, Peloton instructors. That's a different situation. <laughs> <laughs> let's not go crazy. Yeah, let's. Yeah. let's <laughs> but you're right. I mean, I I certainly feel like they are going above and beyond. Uh, as you said, there are people that are working 100 hours a week. There are people that, you know, are saving life after life after life, or they don't have the ability to save life after life after life. And how demoralizing is that? But they're getting up and going to work every day. And and to me, that is that is amazing. I do feel yeah. like that's up on a pedestal, but I don't want to put more pressure on them. That's not my right. intention. My intention is, like you said, to show my appreciation. Uh, it's hard to know what to do for people because, I mean, none of us have been in this situation before, right. so we don't really know what do people need? What? How do we Yeah. How do we react? How do we hold them up? You know, how do right. we show that we're appreciative without making them feel like, hey, here's some more pressure dumped on you. Yeah, have totally. Fun that with could that. create more pressure and conversely you know somebody believes that they're now a superhero can also create some jerks yeah that, that's true <laughs> that's a very that's good point sure. yeah yeah i mean it's interesting i do i think it was actually in a business class i took about communicating with people in an organizational structure and the question that you know that we're encouraged to ask rather than making a suggestion of how to of how to help is just to merely ask the question how can i help and I think that that's sort of what we are trying to do is just say, look, help is available when you want it and what you need. We are here. There's somebody to talk to. There's somebody here to give you support. And, you know, I mean, I think there's there's the obvious like, you know, we want to make sure that we're making enough masks and we want, you know, I, I love these restaurants that are doing food delivery to hospitals and, you know, you want to get your basic needs met. But beyond that, I think each individual Healthcare uh, worker is going to need something different. And, you know, the more we can ask, how can I help? The more support we'll be able to give uh, that is appropriate. So what's the long term trajectory for something like this? Do you see this existing post COVID crossing our fingers? There is one. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Right. Yeah. Right. In the post COVID apocalypse. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a little um, too real. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> where, where we are all living on the planet of the apes. Uh, yes, we will be. We will be around. We will be there. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, we're helping so, connect yeah, zombies no, the idea with therapists. The is that um, <laughs> we're set up to be able to respond to any crisis moment. So, you know, that whether that be multiple peaks of COVID that come around or if there's, uh, who knows, a molasses flood or a war or, you know, I think, you know, there's, there's always going to be opportunities to help people in need. And, you know, the way that we, we set it up was really about medical professionals or, you know, healthcare professionals, those are the people that are in need right now during this crisis. But, you know, we want to be able to mobilize for whatever comes up in the future. And I think, you know, at this point, every day we have more mental health practitioners in our um, directory. And, you know, we we really have a, you know, an almost, you know, an, an army asking that question, how can I help? Yeah. Yeah. And it probably would come in handy in things like hurricanes yeah. or, or, you know, other natural disasters. And and Crystal kind of like was confused. But I just want to say the molasses flood was crazy. <laughs> like that was you, a thing. That's a real thing. What? And it's <laughs> insane. The amount of people it killed. It sounds like a joke. How did I not know about it, this? I mean, it's old time. It okay. happened a long time ago. Right. It's like this close, is a whole nother tangent. Close We're to 100 years ago. We'll but, have to have this conversation. Like, off, offline, you couldn't get away it, from it, and it like sucked it you in like in the blob. Boston, yeah, right? what? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Well, I feel a little better not knowing about it because you live there, right? Right. So you know, yeah. I I get a pass. Tom knows weird shit, so I, I also yeah, I get do a pass. Know weird shit, but the, <laughs> for real, Google the molasses flood. Okay. Because you're, your first thought is like, well, you can outrun molasses. Come well, on. I just I just but thought I can't. thought she was like tongue in cheek, like right. saying if there were to be one. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> like this, making a joke. I, I, yeah, it was a little bit of both. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, wow. I, I'd be very surprised 
if there were an uncontainable molasses flood in a major urban area these days. But hey, you never know. I think yeah. weirder things have happened. I, you know what? I, I count century. nothing off the list yes. now. After exactly. after 2020, everything is up for grabs. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. There may not be a sky tomorrow. I, we just got to roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> can't even watch like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds anymore. Yeah. They're like, yeah, that, yeah. that shit could happen. They will totally. <laughs> birds are creepy. <laughs> You like you think birds are like cute or majestic, and then you see one up close, and they're just weird. No, they're weird. Okay, Tom's got a bird thing. I don't like birds. Everybody, you just... know what we call you? An aviophobe. Oh, <laughs> you got. I a also title. don't like balloons. Do you got a name for that? I bet there's definitely a name for that. Yes, I do. It's called a balloonophobe. <laughs> well, now really? you're just being lazy. <laughs> Whoever came up with that name just really they they were phoning it in that day. <laughs> you know, not everybody has a good day when they're naming things, Tom. Balloonophone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, I think what you're doing is absolutely amazing. How can the Peloton community support you if they would wish to do so? Well, let me think about that. It's a really good question. I mean, I think, you know, in general, we are we're asking really three things. So one is if you are um, a mental health practitioner and you uh, have the time and interest in supporting uh, healthcare professionals, go to emotionalppe.org, sign up to volunteer. Um, there's also a lot more information on the website for anyone who's interested. The other thing is spread the word. So, you know, follow us on social media, share our posts, talk to people, um, you know, just really at this point, we just want to raise awareness as much as we can so that, you know, anyone who needs it can can get the help they need. Um, and then, yeah, the third the third one is related is just, you know, if you know anyone that is in a hospital system or is, you know, closely connected to um, healthcare workers, please uh, let them know and forward our materials and our our web address to them. Um, let's hopefully, you know, get the, the word out that we're around. Absolutely. And and uh, if you can send me any materials, I have the website, but if you have any other materials that we should be posting or anything like that, that we can include uh, with our newsletter that goes out and we will put it on our Facebook page, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure people know all about it. That sounds great. Yeah. And I think, you know, one thing that I have done, which is uh, probably against some rule somewhere, I've <laughs> changed my leaderboard name to emotionalppe.org. So, you know, when uh, folks get on the Peloton and they see me, uh, uh, you know, in uh, next to last place, maybe on the leaderboard, usually, <laughs> um, yeah, they will see the name and, you know, hey, what's that? Interesting. Yeah, um, totally. That's great. Yeah. So, that's just good yeah. marketing. I don't think that's against yeah. rules. I think that's just helpful. Yeah. Normally here so, we would ask you what your leaderboard name is, but now we know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'll tell you. So that what that has obviously hasn't been my, my leaderboard name for that long because um, I had the service has only been around for about a month. But prior to that, my leaderboard name was Get Up 10, which is the name of a Cardi B song. So the line from the song that has always struck me is I've been down nine times, but I get up 10. So it's, you know, really just this idea of. You know, being a phoenix from the ashes and we go through hard times and, you know, we just we get up and we try again and, you know, everybody falls sometimes. So try to get the help you need to get back up. It seems like you were kind of already poised to yeah. be the exact perfect person to, to do this. You already had yeah. that mindset, you know? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know, I I think that, you know, there's two reasons I think that I I was able to pull this off. And, and one is that. I'm sort of, I'm, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, next to. it's an, Adjacent? Yes! Adjacent! Look at that. Balloonophobe. Love it. Adjacent. Like a human thesaurus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I've been adjacent to psychotherapists for my whole life. Both of my parents are psychotherapists. Um, and I've also been medically adjacent because of my, uh, my job, my day job. So, you know, I, I sort of understood a little bit about the issues of what it's like to be uh, a mental health professional, what it's like to deal with mental health issues, and also, you know, what life is like uh, for um, healthcare providers. So, uh, you know, and I think, you know, the other thing that is worth mentioning, too, is just this idea that, you know, that asking for help is hard, and that 
in my own personal life, I've had a lot of issues that I've had to deal with. And, you know, I mean, I, I've been given every advantage and every encouragement to ask for help. And I truly believe that because I've had the opportunities to ask for help and because I've had the opportunities to have, uh, you know, professionals and institutions on my side to help support me and bring me forward, that, you know, that's why I'm here today, why I'm alive, why I'm why I'm on this podcast, why I have a nonprofit. You know, I, I, I don't know where I would be if I hadn't had the opportunity to um, get support and get support easily. And, you know, with the Emotional PPE Project, it's just so streamlined. It's like literally three clicks and you're talking to a therapist. So those are the kinds of connections in my life that have uh, that have gotten me through and, you know, gotten me to be down nine times with then I got up 10, I guess. I would also so. like to commend you that when uh, selecting a leaderboard name based around song lyrics involving getting up, you avoided Chumbawamba. <laughs> yes. Well, it's the that, easy path to take, but you didn't go uh, down that road. I'm really glad you did it. Yes. There are so there are, actually you say that there are so many good get up songs. There are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I it's the honestly the reason is I'm a Gen Xer and I really want to be a millennial. And like I I'm 42 going on 32. I pretend to be a lot younger than I am. So uh, <laughs> that's why I chose Cardi B and not Chumbawamba or you know Marvin Gaye or whoever else is uh, get up related songs. Um, well, I I am thankful personally. Yes, I'm a Gen Xer, but I still hate Chumbawamba. Yes. That song. Mm. Mm. And I, I would yell at millennials to get off my yard, but they don't go outside. Right. So I have that in common with them. <laughs> I guess I'm... He would yell from the open yeah. window. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, with back to Peloton stuff, uh, do you have any advice for people that are just uh, getting their bike? Yeah, I, I do. Um, I'm not shy about it with people in my life either. As I'm not <laughs> Good. <definitely not>. Yeah. <laughs> So what I say, you know, I feel like I started off by by just telling people who my favorite instructors are like, oh, you guys got to check out Jess King. You guys got to check out Robin Arzon and Alex and they're the best. And, you know, but what I've learned in my uh, glorious old age in the past year um, <laughs> is that, you know, everybody actually likes different things. People right. Actually, like Leanne Hainsby. And like it, <laughs> I don't quite get it, but. She's not for me, but that's okay, you know, and I think like because if I have advice, it's find the people that you like because there are so many different options. Uh, yeah, because so I got to say like Leanne is yeah. one of the nicest people I have ever met, like a yeah. genuinely nice person. And and uh, I think that she's got a great persona on the bike and I can understand that that she's not for everybody. I mean, Tom and I right. aren't for everybody right. for that matter. Yeah, people tell us that all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean, to that point, like you're not going to click in that way with right. every single instructor. Yeah. And, and that's what's like like magical about Peloton because they have all of these amazingly big personalities, but they're all different. Right. And they yes. are they can appeal to different people. It's it's I feel pretty it would cool. Be, it would be very easy to fall into the trap of just kind of hiring the same sort of personality yeah. over and over again. And they they if if they're not making a concerted effort to do it, then they're getting very lucky. Yeah. So I, I, I really yeah. I don't think that I mean I think that they are doing it I on do purpose. Too. I think yeah. that they're like we need we need people who can do these things, but that have a wide variety. Yeah. So I, yeah. uh, I think that that is very good advice. I would definitely say try every instructor at least once, yep. at least once. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, because I think that's the nature of having a big personality and this. I've also dealt with personally, but, you know, it's <laughs> like you're going to turn some people off, yeah. you know, like it's you've got a, the fire hose of your personality and it's like shooting all over the place. And like some people are going to go with the stream and some people aren't. Wow, I just made that up. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, right, like, it's incredible to me, like, just talking to different people and, like, who I consider close friends. Like, my cousin, who I who turned me on to the Peloton, it, her favorite instructor is somebody that I am just like, oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> um, just just you know, not so, your cup of tea. Yeah. Right, exactly. But, like, she and I are, like, you know, we love our Pelotons, and that's what matters, you know, and, like... Yeah, I I get it. I totally get it. Pelotons are like French fries. <laughs> They're a delivery system, and some people put ketchup on their French fries, and some people, like Canadians, put gravy, gravy on them, <laughs> which is amazing. 
<laughs> now, here is a question for you, though, Tom. Do you use your um, Peloton to pour gravy and ketchup on? <laughs> yeah, Tom. He doesn't touch that thing. No. He doesn't even, he doesn't even get I within put, a two feet. If I put ketchup on it, she'd kill me. Yeah, <laughs> I would. I absolutely would. You know how much that bike is? Get, get your do. food out of here. <laughs> so uh, how can people find you on social media and connect with you? Yeah, so um, on any of the platforms, just look for Emotional PPE. That's the handle. You can find, uh, you know, find the program there and... Um, you don't want to connect with me personally. I'm I'm not that interesting. Um, I've heard so, you're kind of a fire hose. Is that true? <laughs> exactly. My social media is, is a fire hose as well. So, you know, it's like, it's just like barfing, you know, like, oh, here's my children. They're so interesting. And here's my political views. They're so interesting. Like, yeah, it's not that interesting. Um, yeah. So. Emotional PPE is the handle on all the platforms. And, you know, we're trying, um, we just, we're trying to raise awareness and hopefully we'll um, help some more people. Awesome. Well, thank you uh, so much for taking time out of your day to join us. We really appreciate it. Yes, we do. You are very welcome. It is a serious honor. I mean, if I could just say one additional thing, I was giving a talk the other day on emotional PPE and, you know, I was going through my media slides and I was like, yeah, you know, we're in touch with producers from ABC and NBC and but they can all suck it because I'm going to be on the clip out. <laughs> be I sure think I may have actually used those words. Be you know, sure and tell ABC people, that. So. Yeah, I feel like you might get a little more exposure from them. But yeah. thank you. <laughs> you got to have your priorities, you know. <laughs> well, I'm glad you've got them straight. Yes. yes. Uh, well, all thank right. you. And thank you for all that you have done with your not your nonprofit. It's very special, especially with everything going on. What a wonderful way to channel that extra time that you had. Yeah, right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be doing it. Awesome. Cool. All well, right. Thank you very so, much. Uh, yeah, sure. Glad you were able to make time for me. Well, thank you for making time for us. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Take care. You too. Bye bye. So I guess that brings another one to a close. It does. What pre- are you asking me? Do we have more? No, I was saying oh, it does. It I was like agreeing. A, it sounded like a question. I was like, oh, wait, is there more? It was a period, not, oh, okay. a, not a question mark. Gotcha. <laughs> so uh, what, pray tell, do you have in store for people next week? Uh, next week, we are going to talk to Greg Hoskins and his fiance. And uh, so Greg and his fiance both, they have an interesting relationship because she rides the Peloton. Yes. He uses Fight Camp. Ah. They have not sat in the other person's shoes or done the workout from the other person to paraphrase ghostbusters they have not crossed the stream they have not so we're going to hear more about that next week awesome i love any excuse to talk about giant twinkies so we're going to talk about greg and his fiance not about ghostbusters damn it <laughs> well until then where can people find you people can find me at facebook.com slash crystal d o'keefe they can find me on instagram twitter on the bike and of course the tread at clip out crystal and you can find me on twitter at roger kubert or on facebook at facebook.com slash tom o'keefe find the show online facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there like the page join the group wherever you're getting your podcast from be sure and click subscribe so you never miss an episode and uh, don't forget our newsletter at theclipout.com. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep pedaling. And running. <laughs> <laughs>